Well, good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month, which means we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence. And here to show us some of their favorite maple recipes are our three chefs, Carolyn Peake from Williamstown, and of course, Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis, both from South Hero. It's nice to see you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Well, to start, we're going to highlight this month's free drawing. One of you lucky viewers will win this cookbook, Flavors of the Champlain Islands. It includes nearly 400 favorite recipes from cooks throughout Grand Isle County. I'll let you know how to enter the free drawing at the end of the show. And by the way, the cookbook includes several maple recipes. And Deb, you're going to start off for us? Yes. Okay. And absolutely. So I think some of the best recipes are those that are handed down through the generations. And I'm really pleased to be able to share from the cookbook, Grandma Roberts Maple Glazed Hot Dogs and Apples. It's a very simple dish. You can make it in the skillet. I'm just going to tilt it up a little bit here. You make slashes in your hot dogs, brown them slightly in your skillet, add thick chunks of sliced apples that you core, then top it all with maple syrup and mustard. Let this simmer slightly in your skillet for about 10 or 15 minutes until the hot dogs are nicely plumped, the apple slices are tender, and you've got a wonderful homey dish that's just perfect with some cornbread and homemade baked beans. So I'm very pleased to be able to share this recipe with you all from the cookbook. Now, what could be better? And I'm gonna put the dish right here than the flavors of maple syrup and bacon combined. This recipe is for maple bacon jam, and it is delicious. I have it spread on some crackers. I have also used it to top baked potatoes, added it to my omelets. I've mixed it in with fresh pasta and steamed vegetables. I've eaten it with a spoon. The list goes on. It's very simple to make. You dice bacon, cook it in your skillet until it's brown, and then add it to your crock pot along with a lot of diced onions, some garlic, maple syrup, of course, boiled cider, and a few other ingredients. Let this cook on high for about four hours. When it's done, you're going to want to take a immersion blender, works very well, and pulse it until it's of your desired consistency. This recipe makes about two cups of jam and it will keep in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. I plan on using this on glazing a turkey that I'm cooking, and I think the flavors are gonna be just awesome. Now let's move on to some maple desserts. They say it's important to add love to your mixing bowl when you bake, but I think it's also important to add maple syrup. And these oatmeal applesauce cookies are just packed with flavor. You've got your rolled oats, some spices, wonderful applesauce. I use the mixture of brown sugar, maple sugar, and white granulated sugar, plus some maple syrup and maple extract, a true maple flavored cookie. Top it off with a maple syrup, cream, and confectionery sugar glaze, and you have got a wonderful cookie, perfect with a tall glass of milk. My viewer recipe, comes from Lou Ann Reed of Sheldon, and she shares with the Across the Fence family her family's favorite, maple syrup delight. And it is indeed a delight. This is a recipe that if you bring this to a potluck dinner, it's going to be gone first. So let me share a little bit about it because we give it a thumbs up. You're going to start with a shortbread cookie base, which is simply flour, butter, and chopped nuts. You bake that until it's set. While that's cooling, you make your middle layer, which is cream cheese, confectionery sugar, and some whipped topping. Spread that on, put it in the refrigerator, and then you're almost there, folks. Then you've got your wonderful maple custard topping, which is boiled maple syrup with some egg yolks, water, and flour. You cook that until it's a nice thick consistency and then you spread it on top of the bars. Keep this in the refrigerator until it's ready to serve and then I cut it with a sharp knife dipped in hot water. Now you can have it just as is, 
but our favorite way to have it is with a dollop of whipped cream and a little bit of chopped nuts on the top. So I want to thank Lou Ann Reed of Sheldon for sharing her family's favorite with the Across the Fence, and I hope our viewers give this a try. And Carolyn, I have to say you have an impressive array of dishes to share. Well, it was fun finding the recipes and it was fun making them, and so hopefully folks will find it fun to eat them too. Oh, I'm sure they will. <laughs> well, I'm starting out this morning with a maple chicken salad pita. And it's a very nice way to make a light, um, well, light lunch or light supper, depending on when you have your lighter meal of the day. And it's a uh, diced chicken, apples, cranberries, some Greek yogurt, maple syrup, pepper, parsley, and then you mix that up and then you put it into the pita bread pockets. I've been nibbling on this at home for a couple of days and it is really good and just, I don't know, it's one of those recipes that you can just kind of do whatever with. So there's the first part of our lunch. The second part is a carrot and zucchini salad with maple syrup. And all it is is just grated carrots, grated zucchinis, again some yogurt, mayonnaise, maple syrup, some ginger, and a little bit of sunflower seeds at the end put onto the top of it. So I'm going to put a spoon of this onto the plate to go with our, with our sandwich. There we go. I'll turn that around so you can see it. And it's, it's very easy to make up. You just grate the vegetables and throw them together. You're good to go. Now, my husband and I both like applesauce. And this is maple cinnamon applesauce. And it's uh, red apples, Granny Smith apples, some maple syrup, ground cinnamon, and lemon juice. And this is it's very easy because you just put it in a pot, let it cook. You're going to want to mash the apples down after a while. But I just used a potato masher for it. So it's really very simple. And there's some applesauce for your meal. My next recipe was really kind of interesting. It's called maple blueberry syrup. And I thought, maple blueberry syrup, I wonder what you would use it on. Well, the recipe that came with this one is to make blueberry soda. And it says that you take some uh, just soda water, you know, club soda, whatever, put that into the glass over ice, and then you add just, oh, a few tablespoons of the blueberry syrup. And I can't wait to see what that tastes like. But you've got a nice cool drink. Summer is coming, and so we'll have a nice cool drink for summertime. And there's, there's a good meal right there. But got to have dessert. And this comes from Karen Gottlieb from Stowe. And she says she knows we like pudding cakes and thought that we would enjoy this one. So it's a, a cake. You put syrup in the bottom of the pan. You pour your cake mix over it. And then you pour some uh, light cream over that and bake it. And I'm going to just dobble a little bit of whipped cream on top of that. Or you could put some ice cream. It's got a nice sauce with it. And you're good to go. There's lunch or supper or a combination of all of them. Lynn. Oh, sounds delicious. How about some of this, huh? I always enjoy our maple shows because I have a lot of good maple recipes and you viewers send us a lot of your favorites. And I'm going to begin with this main dish from Betty Cochran of West Danville and it's her Vermont maple chicken. And it has just three ingredients and you can see how good this looks. The chicken goes in the bottom of the pan and then you put maple syrup over that and let it marinate overnight. 
And just before you're ready to cook it, put some spices on top, cover with foil, and then when it's done, uh, remove from the oven and add some slices of Vermont cheddar cheese. As you see here, it's a great taste of Vermont, your cheddar, maple, and Vermont chicken. Uh, thank you very much for our main dish recipe, Betty Cochran of West Danville. Now I've been wanting to show you this next recipe for a very long time. It came out in the Taste of Home magazine back in 2007. And here it is, it's a recipe from Roderick Crandall of Heartland, Vermont. And congratulations to you, Roderick, for having your picture and recipe printed in Taste of Home magazine. Now here's this nice looking loaf of bread. Uh, along with the honey and oatmeal, there's uh, buttermilk in here, a mix of white and whole wheat flour, and it creates two beautiful, flavorful, moist loaves like you see here. And they freeze beautifully, so if you have any leftovers, uh, put them in the freezer for later use. Now, before I move on to my desserts, we've been getting some really nice letters from you viewers about the 60th anniversary show we did, uh, did back in February and some nice notes about how much you enjoy Across the Fence over the years, including Betty McDowell over in Waterbury, who's been watching us since 1996. Diane Busca, also from Waterbury, who has been watching since she was in grade school. Lillian Coleman of Johnson, who's been getting our recipes since the 1970s. Alice Haskins from Waterbury, Gail Valley from Huntington, and Dorothy Delavinary from Rutland, a loyal viewer who has been collecting our recipes for many, many years. And be assured that all your cards and notes are read and appreciated. Now let's move on to desserts. Now, have you viewers ever tried combining maple syrup and pears? Well, Rob Mangian of Burlington did, and this is his pear and maple crumble. Uh, the pears are mixed with uh, maple syrup, raisins, lemon juice, ginger, and over that you put a mixture of a lemon juice, a little more uh, walnuts and some flour and some brown sugar, and it creates an elegant dessert. This is a delicious dessert with an elegant flavor, and I love serving it with a little whipped topping. Uh, take a look at this and uh, you'll want to try this. Now, of all of my desserts, I hope you'll give this one a try because it's something different and just delicious. Thank you very much, Rob, for that recipe. Now, this next one is a favorite of mine. It's quick and easy. Put it together in a matter of an hour or so with the cooking time. And it's my maple apple upside down cake. And here it is. It's a little dry from the trip down here to Burlington today, but you can still see it looks pretty nice. And the maple syrup infuses with both the apples and the cake, creating one of the most delicious desserts you'll ever sink a fork into. Now, a lot of people like to put whipped cream on here, but I'm going to add a little Vermont maple syrup. Now, just take a look at this. It really adds a lot of extra Vermont maple flavor. So this, as I said, is kind of quick and easy and a fun little recipe for you to put together when you want something a little bit different. Okay, now, Carolyn, this next recipe is just for you. And it's over here, it's these chocolate maple bars. Now take a look at this. Um, the bars are made with maple syrup, unsweetened chocolate, pecans, and coconut. And to make the frosting, you combine cocoa, maple syrup, mini marshmallows, and butter. And if you've never tried combining maple and chocolate, you're in for a treat. The good news is it's just 143 calories per slice, but the bad news is it's hard to stop with just one bar. Now here's my last recipe. It's something a little different, and I call it my maple spring pound cake. And I was gonna put a maple leaf in here, but we've had such bad, bad weather, I thought a tulip would be pretty. And to make this, you just uh, use some uh, a mix that you get from the grocery store, pound cake, you, you get the little cutouts, make your design, uh, put it into the cake pan, pour the batter over it, some white batter, it. it comes out with a little design and put a maple frosting on it and your kids love it. They're amazed at how that design comes out in the center. It's like magic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> now as always, there are a couple of different ways you can get the maple recipes. You can get them online from the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension. 
and click on the link to Across the Fence. You can find the recipes on the left-hand side of the page. To get the recipes by mail, please send $2 and a stamped, self-addressed business envelope to Maple Recipes, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. And please remember, if you're ordering the recipes, to include $2 and a stamped, self-addressed business size envelope. We'll use your envelope addressed to Box 188 as your entry for the flavors of the Champlain Islands cookbook. And even if you're not ordering the recipes, you can still enter our free drawing for the cookbook. Just send your name, address, and phone number to the address on the screen, and that will automatically enter you into the free drawing. Well, I want to thank our chefs today for preparing all these delicious maple recipes. Help yourself. <laughs> They'll be back on May 7th with recipes for eating light, which is always a good idea. As we say goodbye for today, please note that tomorrow on Across the Fence, I'll visit with Vermont Maple Ambassador Catherine Hamm and we'll find out about the 49th Annual Vermont Maple Festival, which starts in St. Albans on April 24th. In the meantime, I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.